Hi, I'm going to explain how to check your work when you have a complex eigenvalue because the obvious way to do that is to look on your calculator or to look in the back of the book. But as we talked about in class, um, the eigenvector that is in the back of the book or on your calculator or maple may be just in the span of what you just found, which is probably simple if you didn't have a complex eigenvector to eyeball and check. But if you have a complex eigenvector, it becomes a little bit more tricky. So here is a matrix off of uh, it, the quiz version one, which was not the example we talked about in class, but I think it will illustrate the purpose. So we find the eigenvalue first, uh, eigenvalues, and we find the characteristic polynomial to do this, and we set that equal to zero, and what happens is we have to use the quadratic formula, and when we use the quadratic formula, we find that the um, eigenvectors are complex, two plus or minus i. So then we have to find the eigenvectors, and I'm going to only find one. It's uh, the same work for the other one. We plug in lambda equals two plus i, uh, and subtract it down the diagonal in the augmented matrix. So we get the matrix minus i, minus one, zero, uh, one and minus one set equal to zero. And here we see that if I just multiply the first row by minus i, then I could add that to the second row and I would get a zero. I would kill out the minus i underneath it. So I do the computation and as I explained before, I do it slower than if I was doing this um, quickly through with just regular real numbers. And that's because I have to take into consideration that I'm working with complex numbers and I have to apply the rules of complex numbers, which I am not as used to as working with real numbers. So minus i times minus i is minus 1. And uh, the minus i times minus 1 gives me i. Now I'm ready to add the first row to the second, which gives me uh, a row of zeros in the bottom, which it should, because if you don't have a row of zeros in the bottom, you made a mistake somewhere. And then I can solve this system equal to zero and set it into parametric form. And I get that the eigenvector associated with this eigenvalue is the element i1 in the eigenspace which is a span of I1. So here is where the problem occurs. They could give you something in the back of the book which belongs to the span of this eigenvector and it may not be immediately obvious that your answer is the same as the answer in the back of the book. So how do you check? The quickest way to do this is to just check if A times the vector is equal to your lambda times the vector. So you just directly compute. What is A times your eigenvector? Well, I get this 2i minus 1 and i plus 2. Then I just check if lambda times the eigenvector turns out to be the same thing. So lambda in this case was 2 plus i. The eigenvector was i1. I multiply them together, and I have to use the properties of complex numbers here. Um, I get that i squared is minus 1, of course. And um, my end result is 2i minus 1 and 2i plus 1, uh, 2i, 2 plus i. And you see that they indeed match, and that verifies that my eigenvector is indeed correct.